What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? No one has an answer for that thought experiment. It's a fun question to ask because everyone has their own interpretation. Everybody has their own guess. So instead, let me ask you a simpler question. What do you think happens when a six pound boulder hits a car windshield at 75 miles per hour? The interstate I-75 takes you from Michigan all the way to Miami. It's the seventh longest highway in the United States and millions use it to get up and down the nation every single day. And one of those people being 32 year old Kenneth White. He was a construction worker riding with a coworker and during that ride, the worst would happen. Like a cannonball. That's how Stephen Amthor describes what happened in the moment his friend Kenneth White was killed. Amthor driving the van both were riding in October 18th. The rock crashing through the windshield as they headed south on I-75. Amthor pulling over, finding his friend bleeding profusely. His 911 call for help played in the courtroom today. Get it, I'm here, buddy. Don't make me a thing. Okay, do you know what my hair? No, I have no idea. We have a travel log coming down over there. It's something hit through my windshield and hit it. On October 18th, 2017, five teens named McCaden Payne, Trevor Gray, Alexander Miller, Mark Seleski, and Kyle Anger chose to play a game called overpassing. The five teens collected heavy rocks and then walked to an overpass that went across the I-75. The five teens then proceeded to throw the stones off the overpass with the intention to hit people's cars. That's the point of the game, to make the stones bounce off of people's cars and leave damage behind. Before the teenagers decided to stop playing this game, they had one large stone left, a six pound rock. They threw it over the overpass and instead of bouncing off of a car, it flew through the windshield of Kenneth White's car. The stone would strike him in the head and kill him instantly. The driver of the vehicle, Kenneth's co-worker, had no idea what happened, and within a matter of moments, he realized and observed that Kenneth had been struck with a rock at high speed. The five teens saw the car come to a sudden stop, and they knew that they had struck the windshield. They all chose to flee the overpass before being seen. After leaving the overpass, the teens all got into the same car and go to a restaurant to talk about what happened. It was unknown at the time whether or not the teens knew that they killed someone, but they definitely knew that they caused damage. The next day at school, one of the teens would be questioned, but they would be quickly released. It wouldn't be until that afternoon when the teens found out that they killed someone, they'd begin to close ranks. The five teens exchanged text messages, including ones that said, We could go to prison for life for this. Everyone lay low and no one rat us out. No one saw us. If everyone shuts up, we won't get caught. The next day, October 21st, the police identified the vehicle in which the teens fled. After identifying the owner, the police also sought evidence of who was inside it that night. After reviewing camera footage from the fast food restaurant where the teens ate, the police identified the five teens. The following day, Sunday, October 22nd, the police contacted the families of the five teens involved, informing them that warrants were out for their arrest. Since they were juveniles, the teens were not arrested, but instead told that they would have to surrender to the police by 10 p.m. that day. Kyle Anger reportedly attended church that day and had a dinner at a restaurant with his family before surrendering to the police. It wouldn't be until 8 p.m. that day when all of the teens would be arrested. Kyle Anger was determined to be the ringleader of the five teens, the one to encourage the others to do this awful act. And he would be the first one to be charged as an adult because he was 18 at the time. But during the trial, many of the teens assumed that they would get light sentences because they were minors. But the judge had different plans. The four teens in court today were ages 15 to 17 years old. When this happened, their defense attorneys tried to convince the judge they should be sentenced as juveniles. The judge dramatically disagreed. The proposal for juvenile sentencing is rejected. That applause came from the family of the young man killed. Four teens in court today have been held in juvenile detention since it happened, and they were all students at Clio High School. They were originally charged with second-degree murder, but pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of manslaughter. The sentence sends them to adult prison. Kenneth is getting his justice he deserves. My baby is he's happy now. He can rest. The evidence and testimony in the case pointed to 18-year-old Kyle Anger as the one who planned the prank, loaded up his pickup with the rocks, and threw the rock that killed. 
He pleaded guilty to second degree murder and now faces several more years in prison when he is sentenced at a later date. Kyle Anger, because he was an adult when he was sentenced, was given 3 to 20 years in prison and was charged with manslaughter. The other four teens received 1 to 4 years of probation after the judge's decision to charge them as adults was overturned by the Court of Appeal. Kenneth White was 32 years old and he left behind his fiancée and his four children, the youngest being 5 years old. Hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's Morbid Reality Special. There's going to be way more in store for you today and tomorrow to celebrate the end of this spooky month. Today you're going to get five uploads, one from now all the way up until 5pm, and all of it is going to be haunting and terrifying, so I hope you guys are ready. And as always, I gotta thank the Patreon supporters that make content like this possible. A big thank you to The Blurred Star, Mr. Sandman, Mike, Sleepy Dragon, Power Lover, Loving Tate, Tron Destroy 23, Code Connor Purvis, S16, Squish, Rare Days, My Golden Experience, James Tucker, BMX30, Cinnamon Sticks, Scott, The Fake Musician, Buckethead, Samantha Bellhart, Admin Fanaker, Bloody Hunter, Keeley, Dundernass Hawk, Swiss Patreon user, and Noah. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And even to help support the channel, there's two links in the description, one of my merch store and one of my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so I can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.